that's a hard thing to do. The title of the message today is Hopeless. Hope for the hopeless. And so many times we don't, we lose focus on the Lord. Scripture today I'll be reading from is Isaiah 40, 28 through 31. And my preferred Bible that I like to read from is a Holman Christian Standard. So that's what we'll be using today. Feel free to read along in your preferred Bible. Did you ever notice, or did you not know, have you not heard Isaiah 40, 28 through 31? Have you not heard Yahweh is the everlasting God? The creator of the whole earth, he never grows faint or weary. There is no limit to his understanding. He gives strength to the weary and strengthens the powerless. Youths may faint and grow weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who trust in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not grow faint. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, I just do hope, that, I hope that by the time the service is over today, that our focus will be able to be on you at all times, Lord. And then when we get down and discouraged, we look to you instead of looking for anything else that might supplement you, Lord. Lord, I pray that we realize that sins in our lives and discouragement uh, cause us to move away and not think about you, Lord. Open our eyes now, open our hearts and open our minds. Thank you for all you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There was a story in Sunday, Sunday School Times. It's called Where to Cast Your Nets. And it goes something like this. You may have heard it before. Did you ever notice, said the old lady, as she was smiling into the troubled face before her, that when the Lord told the fishermen, the discouraged fishermen, to cast their nets again, it was right in the same old place where they had caught nothing. If we could only get to some new place. When we get discouraged, trying again would be easy, an easier thing. If we could be somebody else, or go somewhere else, or do something else. It might not be so hard to have fresh faith and courage. But it's, it's the same old net, the same old pond for most of us. The old temptations are to be overcome. The old thoughts are to be con conquered. The old trials and discouragements before we, which we failed yesterday to be faced again today. We must win success where we are. If we win it at all, and if, he, and if it is a master himself who, after all these toilful, disheartening failures, bids us try again. I'm going to set this down. We'll use a pulpit for right now. If we could get away from, to, to a new place. I think about a musical that, I, that uh, I did back when I was a small child, actually. It was called Surrender. And it was a song called... I'd rather go to Africa, and the song, the, the title, but it was about a high school group that was in a youth choir. I'd rather go to Africa, and we're going to say the Niceville High, Niceville High, to give my testimony. And basically what he was saying was, it'd be easier for me to go someplace else to give my testimony than it would be to uh, give my testimony in Niceville High because people would make fun of me. He would care about what people thought, but we need to worry about what people think. Now, granted, that's not where I'm going today with the message. But the point is, is that we should always be focused on what people see in us. So if we have no hope in ourselves. We're not showing that we have hope. And therefore, we're not showing the Lord shining through us. Now, my question is, does anyone get discouraged here? I, and it's a, it's a redundant question. It's a, it's a rhetorical question. But at the same time, I know I do. And I know everyone here has gone through discouragement. And sometimes I get downright depressed. I want to talk about why Christians and non-Christians get down and how they can come out of these things, feelings of hopelessness. Discouragement. Now looking at this picture right here, you see this woman, and it might be a little hard to see what's going on, but she's holding her hands up here, and it's like she's about to go nuts. Her head's about to explode. You ever been there? Yeah. Absolutely. Things that make us discouraged are burdens such as money and jobs, family problems, things that are out of our control such as death, 
or problems with friends. Sickness can lead to depression. Guilt over anger and addictions are the easiest way to get depressed. As I've told you many times before, I have an anger problem, and when people see me driving down the road, they look at me and go, that guy's crazy. I don't want to have anything to do with that dude right there, uh, other than just stay away from him. And that is not the way we should be. Lack of faith causes discouragement. In Moses, uh, Moses in Numbers 11, um, Numbers 10, 11, 10 through 15. Moses heard the people, family after family, crying at the entrance of their tents. The Lord was very angry. Moses was also provoked. So Moses asked the Lord, why have you brought such trouble on your servant? Why are you angry with me? And why do you burden me with all these people? Did I conceive all these people? Did I give them birth so you, you should tell me? Carry them at your breast as a nursing woman carries a baby to the land that you swore to give their fathers. Where can I get meat to give these people? For they are crying to me, give us meat to eat. I can't carry all these people by myself. They are too much for me. If you're going to treat me like this, please kill me right now. If you're pleased with me, don't let me see my misery anymore. In Numbers 11, we see that Moses, doing everything the Lord told him to do, and still everything seemed to go bad. They were not being good people. The Lord was supplying their needs. He had given them the manna. But they wanted more. They weren't being good. But, the, but, he, but Moses had that. There's a whole other story that goes along with that, obviously. But Moses had provided for them through the Lord had provided through Moses. And he provides for them again, and, they go, and it, goes, it goes bad. They were being disobedient, but the Lord did provide for him to get Moses through that. Because when he reached that point where he couldn't handle it anymore, the Lord handled it for him. In Joshua 7, 1 through 12, things don't turn out well for Achan. The Israelites were sinning, and they were being defeated for their sins. God, God tells Joshua he will not be able to, uh, to destroy them, the accursed things, unless they repent. Good old Achan really messed things up. Achan, was, Achan had stolen things from, from people as they, as they conquered lands, and he caused problems for them. Now, listen to this. People, when you do things wrong, it doesn't always turn out well, even if you ask the Lord for forgiveness. Achan ended up telling Joshua that he took these things and he hid them in his tent. And even though he told him the truth, Joshua told him to take everything Achan owned, his whole family, stone them all, and burn every solitary thing, them and everything that they own, to for because the in Joshua 17 he says he needed to repent. In Galatians 6, 7, and 8, it says, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, he will also reap. Because the one who sows to the flesh will reap corruption from the flesh. The one who sows to the, to the uh, Spirit will reap life from the Spirit. I want to change those words from sows. Go back to Galatians 6, 7, and 8. I want to change the words from sows to plants or puts out. And change the word from reaps to cuts or gathers. Some of the, some of the words in the Bible, I, I just want to bring them up today. So we say, for whatever a man puts out, he will reap. The old phrase comes, comes to mind, garbage in, garbage out. When you put garbage in, you put garbage out. When you take garbage in, you put garbage out. When you bring the Holy Spirit in, when you bring the Bible in, when you bring the Word of God in, that's what comes out of you. That's what this, this, this summary is. This, this kind of summarizes that for you. Isaiah 59.2. But your iniquities have built barriers between you and your God. And your sins have made him hide his face from you so that he does not listen. This talks about God not listening. 
God's not going to listen to you if you have sins going on in your life. So when you present something to him that you have a real issue with and, and you have a problem with, he's not going to listen to that because you have caused a barrier between you. And you wonder why you're, you're sad. Because God's hiding his face from you. You have to repent of those sins to get back in focus with him. Iniquities means immoral behavior, and immoral behavior could be anything. Anything that, that you're doing that separates you from God could be considered immoral behavior. But your iniquities have built barriers between you and your God. Not staying in constant connection, in constant communication, and being receptive to God will cause discouragement. Our joy comes from the Lord. Amen? Amen. Where does the joy come from? The Lord. Romans 12, 12. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in affliction. Be persistent in prayer. Okay. Affliction. Something that causes pain or suffering. We have multiple pastors and, and uh, televangelists out there who say, Everyone, just be happy. We, the Lord wants you to be happy and fruitful and, and wants you to be a, have you an abundant life. It will all be wonderful. Well, this scripture right here tells us flat out we're going to have problems. Affliction, something that causes pain or, pain or suffering. It says be, be persistent in prayer through that affliction because the Lord tells us we're going to be afflicted. We're going to have pain. It's not always going to be happy. Philippians 4, 6. Don't worry about anything, but in everything, through prayer and petition and with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Once again. Don't worry about anything. Through prayer and petition, what is a petition? A formal request. You lift up that request to the Lord, and it may not come back the way you want it to, but it will come back answered. And it will come back the way the Lord wants it to be. And if that's what you're wanting, you want the Lord's will, and you'll be happy with the way it returns. Colossians 4.2 Devote yourselves to prayer. Stay alert in it with thanksgiving. What are these scriptures they were? Romans, Philippians, Colossians, they all have in common. They say prayer. Stay firm in prayer. Keep that connection with the Lord. That's going to be your best, your best bet when you're trying to get over your sadness, your hopelessness. Stay connected to the Lord. We are commanded not to be discouraged. Joshua 1.9 Haven't I commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Okay, he says he's with you. He's always there. Strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or, or discouraged. Say it again. Do not be afraid or discouraged. Deuteronomy 31.8 The Lord is the one who will go before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Do not be afraid or discouraged. So we got Joshua and Deuteronomy. Isaiah 41.10. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will hold on to you with my righteous right hand. So if you're one of God's children, he has you. He has you through it all. I have to say this. Some people are like, you know, they come to church on a regular basis and they, they go, well, God's, excuse me. God is, he does that for everyone. So it's, eh, how's that going to help you right now? We don't, want to, we don't want to be like the selfish people that the, that the manna wasn't good enough for, but we need the meat. Whatever God provides, you ought, you ought to be happy with. Find the joy in that. Don't worry about what the Joneses have. And believe me when I say this, I'm not just speaking to you, I'm speaking to myself. I'm just, I'm just like you. I'm saved by grace and faith in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Now, I've told you what we need to do as Christians and what we're supposed to do, how to act and react to discouragement. How does Christians discourage me? How, how, how does a Christian's discouragement affect a non-Christian? Like I was saying a minute ago about driving down the road, they look at this lunatic driving down the road screaming while he's, while he's driving down the road. That's me. It's not funny. 
Trust me, my wife gets very angry with me. How does it lead them to being discouraged? Because if they look at a Christian and can't find hope, how are they going to find hope? I want to tell you a little story. There was once an optimistic father, farmer. You might have heard this before. That's okay. Um, who couldn't wait to greet each day with a resounding, Good morning, God! He lived near a woman whose greeting was more like, Good God, it's morning. They were each a trial to each other. Where he saw opportunity, she saw problems. Where he was satisfied, she was discontented. One bright morning, he exclaimed, Look at the beautiful sky. Did you see such a glorious sunrise? Yeah, she countered. It'll probably get so hot that the crops will scorch. During an afternoon, during an after, afternoon shower, he, com he commented, Isn't this wonderful? The Lord is giving, a, giving the corn a drink today. And if it doesn't stop before too long, came the sour reply. Well, wish we'd taken out insurance on the crops, flood insurance on the crops. Convinced he could still instill some awe and wonder in her hardened attitude, he bought a remarkable dog. Not just any mutt, but the most expensive, highly trained, and gifted he could find. The animal was exquisite. It could perform remarkable and impossible feats, which the farmer thought would surely amaze even his neighbor. So he invited her to watch his dog perform. Fetch, he commanded as he tossed the stick into the lake, where it bobbed up and down and rippled in the water. The dog bounded after the stick, walked on water. And retrieved it. What do you think of that? He, he asked, smiling. Not much of a dog, she frowned. He can't even swim. <laughs> what does the world see in us? I'm still coming back to, to, to that my little story about myself. But this this something I see that I've seen my whole life. I was raised, born and raised in Pensacola, Florida. And Pensacola Christian College is right there in Pensacola, Florida. And maybe at one time this could be an effective method. But I used to watch these guys with signs, or actually they would just be screaming on the side of the street. And maybe at one time when windows were down on cars because there wasn't an air conditioner in the car, it might have been remotely uh, successful. But typically when you see some of the people standing on the corner screaming, holding up the Bible, screaming, all the people hear typically is, You're going to hell! Because that's what the devil wants the, wants the world to hear. And sometimes they'll hold up a sign and says, something to that effect, you're going to, going to hell. The problem is, is they're only seeing part of the story. But typically when you see them screaming on the side of the street, now with your window up, your radio on, and your, and your air conditioner, unless you roll it down, the only people who are going to do that are maybe a Christian. But typically you see, run around, run around, run around, run around. And so you just hear them screaming. We have to find more effective ways to lead people to the Lord. But we want to get people to a place where they're encouraged and not discouraged. So let's say this, Romans 3.23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is death. Now, if you saw those two, th those two scriptures right there, you think to yourself, man, what's the good? For, the, for all of sin and fall short of the glory of God, and for the wages of that sin is death. If that's all you heard, would you be encouraged or discouraged? So let's read them again. It's what the people need to hear. Romans 3, 23 through 26. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are justified freely by, the, by His grace through the redemption of the Jesus Christ, of Christ Jesus. God presented Him as a propitiation through faith in His blood. To demonstrate His righteousness, because in His restraint, God passed over the sins previously committed. God presented Him to, the, to demonstrate righteousness at the present time 
so that he would be righteous and declare righteous the one who has faith in Jesus. Propitiation means a vessel or appeasement. And Jesus was the vessel to appease the sins of the world, to wipe them clean. It's not a word that I really like because when you're trying to when you're trying to share the gospel and you say the word propitiation, most Christians have no idea what that word means. And there's and it's a hard word to define. So you so try the word appeasement. Try to explain it a little better than just reading it to somebody. Jesus was his blood appeased the sin of the world. It, it wiped it away. He wasn't just a lamb. He was the ultimate lamb of God. The only one who could come down and wipe away our sin. Wipe away the sins of the world. If you accept him as your Lord and Savior. Romans 6.23 For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Through the only way, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Man, I hope people hear that. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. I love music. And one of the songs that, that, that we do sometimes is called Trading My Sorrows. And it says, I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my pain. I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord. And then we go into 2 Corinthians 4, 8, and 9. And this is the verse. We are pressured in every way, but not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not abandoned. We are struck down, but not destroyed. So to go back to the words, I am pressed, but not crushed, persecuted, not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. I am blessed beyond the curse, for his promise will endure, for his joy is going to be my strength. Though the sorrow may last for the night, his joy comes in the morning. I'm trading my sorrows, I'm trading my pain. I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord. That's the wonderful thing about music. Let's say that somebody was standing on that street corner, not yelling, but they were singing. And they sang this song. People might roll down those windows and listen. I'm pressed but not crushed, persecuted but not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed. I'm pressed beyond the curse, but his promise will endure, that his joy is going to be my strength. Imagine that. If they roll down those windows and they listen. Have to find a new way to get people excited about the Lord. Amen? Amen? We really need to. They need to hear the entire story and they need to see it emanate through us. If we are the body of Christ, if we do not show the joy, they won't, they won't believe it. Here's some scriptures of encouragement. 1 Peter 1, 6 through 9. You rejoice in this, though now for a short time you have had to struggle in your various trials. Struggle, there it is, still again. So that the genuineness of your faith, more valuable than gold, which perishes through, though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. You love him, though you have not seen him. And though not seeing him now, you believe in him and rejoice with inexpressible and glorious joy because you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. What is this scripture about? Faith. This scripture is about faith. And without faith in God, you will not truly be able to find the one hope you desire. You love him. Though you have not seen him. And though not seeing him now, 
you believe in him and rejoice with inexpressible joy. See, the Bible says that you'll have that inexpressible joy if you have faith in God. Amen? Because you're receiving the goal of your faith and the salvation of your souls. That should give you encouragement every single day. We are a selfish world. Amen? How many times have you sat there and saw some, seen something that you, that you wanted? You were like, man, I sure would like to have that. I was thinking about a, a little clip I saw on, on Facebook the other day where somebody was sitting there, this person was driving this really, really nice sports car, and they look up in there and see somebody has a helicopter. And they see the helicopter. Man, I sure would like to have a helicopter. And then somebody driving that sports car is next to somebody driving an SUV. SUV guy's looking at the sports car and says, I sure would love to have that sports car. And then the person driving the sports car or the SUV is next to somebody driving a regular car, just an everyday car. And he looks like, man, I sure would like to have that SUV. And the person driving the SUV is next to somebody driving, uh, or excuse me, the person driving the regular car is next to somebody driving a bicycle. The bicycle person says, I sure would have a, like to have a car person driving a bicycle is right next to somebody that is standing waiting for a bus. I sure would like to have a, bu uh, a, a, uh, a bicycle. person at the, at the bus stop, somebody, somebody from upstairs in a wheelchair is looking down and says, I sure would like to be able to walk. You have to put your faith in something other than worldly things. And you can find that joy in the Lord and that's it. You may find temporary happiness with little things that you can get on this earth, but the ultimate joy is only going to come from heaven. I, I think about those, those kids from the Shriners Hospital. You, I know you watch those commercials, and they may bring tears to your eyes. If you watch them and you pay attention to those little kids, I can't think of the name, the, the, the boy's little name, but he's, he's about, you know, he's, he's this big, and he probably won't get much bigger than that, and he's in a wheelchair. And he said, I've had a hundred and something surgeries on my body. And he's smiling. Because he's found contentment. And I don't know if it's in the Lord, but I, I, he has to have found it. I have to believe that someone's led him to the Lord because I can't believe somebody could have that joy and be someone who's constantly in pain. You have to find that joy in the Lord. Psalms 55.22 Cast your burden on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never allow the righteous to be shaken. Once again, it brings me to another song and we'll be doing it this at the end of the service. Cast your cares. It's the cares course. And we're going to sing this at the end of the service. So I want you to pay attention to it if you don't know, know the song. It was, I cast all my cares upon you. I lay all of my burdens down at your feet. And any time that I don't know what to do, I will cast all my cares upon you. The only way to be, to be encouraged and, and have the joy is to lay everything good and bad at the feet of Jesus. And I say good and bad because we should be laying those good things at the feet of Jesus and saying, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We need to be sharing those things with other people and say, this is a wonderful thing that the Lord has done for me. And they may look at you and go, well, that, the Lord's never done anything like that for me. But you look at him and go, but he may do something different. It may be better. But the one thing I can tell you for sure is that salvation will give you ultimate joy, if not here on earth, in heaven. Amen? Amen? Repentance from sin and putting your faith and trust in the Lord, this is true for Christians and non-Christians. The Lord calls us to trust in Him. Christians need to put their faith in Him because they already believe in Him. Non-Christians just need to put their faith in Him. But they need to find that place where they need to, where, where, they, where they can put their faith in Him. With you may, may need to be the vessel to show them. 2 Peter 3, 9. The Lord does not delay His promise as some understand delay. This is His time. But is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. This is what the world doesn't like. 
The world doesn't like that word repentance. They hate that word. And every time I get up here to speak, I will always talk about repentance. Because without repentance, we can't find that joy. Aren't you glad the Lord is patient with you, with us? I know there's been times in my life where I think to myself, the Lord's looking down at me and going, I just need to bring that boy home. He's a pastor, and sometimes he, I look down there and go, what is he doing? I've got to put my faith in him, my faith and trust in him. Contrary to what people believe, pastors have flaws. You believe it? I know that I've read many comments on Facebook, and I've, I've seen people say, they look, they look at Christians and say, I left the church because Christians are hypocrites. There's, there's truth in that. Because we look at some sins and put them on a higher scale, a higher scale and we focus on that and we say that you are doing a bad thing. But that, that's where that idea comes into in play, splinter in the other person's eye, plank in your own. Now, granted, we have to look at them and go, I understand that I'm a not, I, I understand that I'm a sinner, and I'm not telling you that I'm perfect. I'm telling you what the Bible says about sin. So, yes, we have to look at them and go, honestly, yes, in, a, in ways we are hypocrites. But you need to put your faith in God, not, the, not your faith in us. You need to stop looking at the, at the members of the church because in a lot of cases, there are many people who go to churches that aren't saved. So they're not technically part of the church. But they're there. And yes, there's Christians out there, Christians, true Christians, people who accept the Lord as their Savior. There's true Christians that are still poor, poor examples. They've done something called backslide. They're not in league with the Lord. They're not, they're, they're not in a conversation with the Lord. So they're having problems with, uh, with their own life, and they're focusing on someone else's sins. All Christians are, are, are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. We are flawed, and we are failures. Amen? Mm -hmm. yeah. I want the people online to hear that. Amen? We are flawed, and we are failures. Amen. But we are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. This is why it's so important for the world to see the best in us if we are Christians. They need to see the joy and where that joy comes from. Hebrews 11, 6. Now, without faith, it is impossible to please God. There it is. I didn't say it. Hebrews did. For the one who draws near to him must believe that he exists and rewards those who seek him. The one who draws near to him must believe that he exists and rewards those who seek him. I'm going to do another song, Draw Me Near. And I want you to pay attention to the words like I always want you to.
learn contentment, humbleness, and gratefulness. Philippians 4, 12 through 13. I know both how to have a little and how to have a lot. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret to of being content. Whether well-fed or hungry, whether in abundance or in need, I am able to do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And this is the scripture right here. This is the, this is the gist of it all. Finding that contentment not in what we have or what we can get or what, what our needs are, what we think we need, but putting full trust in and faith in Jesus Christ and knowing that he will be there to bring us through all of it. I believe sometimes we have to work or just put forth effort for hope. It is imperative that we stay close to the Lord and to seek the body of Christ. If we are faithful and we are vigorously seeking his will, we can accomplish anything. Our joy will be abundant and our blessings will overflow. We won't need a physical sign to reach the lost because our lives will lead others to the Savior, Jesus Christ. It will probably be difficult at times, but he will provide and we seek him. I'll ask again. Have you felt discouraged? Is there something in your life that's separating you from the joy of the Lord? Have you thought about any of that today? Have you thought about the fact, is there something that I'm doing or not doing that's causing me to not have the joy or the hope that I need to have? Is there something I'm doing or not doing that is a poor example for the world and causing them to be discouraged? We're going to close with a word of prayer, and after we close that word of prayer, we're going to sing, uh, I cast all my cares upon you. And we'll be dismissed for that this week. Keep Brother Doug in your, in, in your prayers also. Dear Lord, I just want to thank you once again for the beautiful day you've given us today, Lord. Lord, I pray that what was said today, Lord, what the scriptures that were mentioned, Lord, that people understood them as you wanted them to hear them, Lord, not as I may have said them, Lord. I pray that you can, you can be a discernment for everyone. You can make my words be what you want them to hear. Lord, I pray that pray for each individual here. If they are going through discouragement or hopelessness or sadness, Lord, I pray that you just handle, the, handle them as you see fit, Lord. We love you so much. We want to lift up our pastor who's, who's traveling, Lord. Once again, I just pray that he comes back refreshed and renewed and ready to serve you, Lord, and keep him safe. Thank you for all you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.